so Ben Charrington needed a first baseman, and he went out and got one, two, three of them. Hey, it's a start. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins, where you found this. The acquisition of Carlos Santana over the Thanksgiving weekend is out of character, obviously, not just for this general manager, but also for this franchise. The double acquisition of Santana on top of G-Man Choi on top of Lewin Diaz is, yeah, that's that's kind of making the point, even though I'm positive that's not Charrington's intent. And I'm going to throw in another name into this mix, and that's Miguel Andujar. I couldn't have been sure they'd tender him through arbitration. He, of course, was a late-season waiver pickup. And he's a guy who has a reputation, at least going back three, four years, as being able to hit. He showed a tiny bit of that in a tiny sample size that he was afforded arriving in Pittsburgh so late into the season. A lot of doubles to the notch. That seemed to be his thing. But when you put together all four of these players, again, not three, but four What you have is some kind of mix of 1B slash DH, if you're following me here. I think in Pittsburgh, it's really, really easy for us to forget that the DH is now a position here. So when we look at the diamond, I'm guilty of this myself all the time, actually. Look at the diamond and say, oh, all they need is this position and this position. We forget, I forget that they also need a DH. So it could be a case of uh, utilizing one guy as the DH, one guy as the first baseman, depending on the platoon situation, depending on the splits. It might be a case where Andujar would be the DH more often than not. It can be the case where Diaz is the guy who comes in as a late-inning substitute. Whatever it is, it looks and feels like four players for two needs. And I'm going to say this again because I'm the guy who's also been here telling you that they're going to punt on the 2023 season, that this is a good start. That is exactly what it is. It's a good start. I hope it continues. I hope it progresses into more pitching, a real live, honest to God starter to come in to complement the young guys they've already got. I hope it results in significant help for the bullpen. I really, really hope that one happens. That actually doesn't cost much money. It never does, especially since you've got the back end pretty much taken care of with a healthy David Bednar and Yeri De Los Santos there for you. It's a start. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. So there, what did I leave out? They got first base men, plural. They got people to maybe address the 1B slash DH situation. They got platoon splits. They might you know, be looking at all of this in a different prism after getting some criticism. Most importantly, by far, from their season ticket base, from their fans. This all might be a reflex. This all might have come from over Charrington's head. I don't know that yet. I hope to find out, but I don't know that yet. I also don't know that it will continue. I also don't know that they're going to, you know 
chase a Jose Quintana or someone like that that they can bring in and have them really provide an anchor for that rotation. You know, get some additional arms in general. But here's what I do know. So I I wanted to get all that other stuff out of the way first so nobody says, oh, you're just coming in and raining all over this because you're the guy who said they were punting and whatever else here. My concern with these acquisitions is that they don't appear to line up with where baseball's headed. Listen, nobody barked louder than I did about utilizing an archaic stat like batting average all through, what, for years now. Anytime I'd hear somebody say, ah, he's only hitting 200 or he's only hitting 210 or 220, it always comes down to OPS. Everything does. I believe that anyway. That's on base plus slugging percentage because it incorporates the number of times you reach base and a single is the same as a walk. It also incorporates the number of total bases that you get because a home run, a triple, and a double aren't the same as a single. So it's a much, 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 much better stat. However, however, when you get into the post-shift era of baseball, you're going to need to see, I believe, a little bit more weighting applied to the plain old hitting. Because I think you're going to see teams not right away because of roster makeup, because of culture and everything else that's developed, uh, especially in the launch angle era over the past few years. You're going to see teams kind of get back toward more straight up old school contact hitting. And I've been saying here for months as well that I'd really like to see the Pirates take more of a pioneering step and being the first team that goes somewhat in that direction, as opposed to just saying, hey, everybody, we just caught up with the launch angle era. Here we are. And there's nobody in the room, right? That's that's kind of the concern here. Uh, I look at Santana's 202 batting average, and it doesn't concern me much in the 2022 context because he also topped 300 in on base. He also hit for power with the 19 home runs, so he had himself a decent slugging and a decent OPS. But is that really where everything's going now? And how long will it take? Because the truth is, Choi's line is kind of similar. And so is Diaz's, and so is Andujar's. And while you might say, well, listen, we really just want to focus on power at the first base slash DH positions, It's still two spots out of nine in your order, and you need to have them being productive within the perspective of where the game is at that point. That's that's really the only thing I've got here. That's the only it's not even negative as much as it is pensive. Uh, We'll we'll see how it works out. I'd still I'd still like to see, you know, I'd like to see more Jiwan Bay than I would. G-Man Choi. Let's put it that way. Did that work? All right. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from... Steve, who asks in general, DK, why not value a guy who can actually play a position and hit instead of a guy who is okay at several positions and can't hit? Steve, you have hit on a question that does not ever get a satisfactory answer from the Pirates, specifically from Derek Shelton. He values versatility because he and Don Kelly believe in moving players around and having uh, the the flexibility to make out the lineups the way they want to account for rest factors and so forth. And all of that can sound good. They can make a very compelling argument. And by the way, Charrington is 1,000% on the same page with them on this. Now, all three of them can make that argument. And by the end of it, you'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That makes perfect sense. Except for one thing. The Pirates 
probably only have, what, four or five guys that you'd be worried about managing in this way? Meaning, for example, Brian Reynolds. You know, I, I'd be concerned about workload when it comes to Reynolds. Yeah, he's still young and everything, and he never says no. He never takes a day off. He doesn't complain about paying this or paying that. So you have to forcibly give him days of rest. And I know that makes fans unhappy when that happens because, you know, it's all just like a video game and they're never supposed to get tired. That's not how it works. But when you have an overall roster like this and you're giving, let me pick a couple names out of the hat here. You're giving Rodolfo Castro a day of rest. I'm sorry, no. When you're valuing that Castro can bounce from this position to that position because you can rest guys, because you can move guys into different looks for different lineups. No, no, no. Some things about baseball won't change. And really, for the most part, over the past 150 years, haven't. If you're a good player, you find a spot on a field, you stay there, you own it. That's it. That's it. It's not more complicated than that. It was the truth for Hannes Wagner. It's the truth for Reynolds. Okay. You find a spot, you stick. You don't see very good players, never mind great players. You don't even see very good players bounce around from position to position. So, in my opinion, the Pirates grossly overvalue this. I believe that it does come with some worth as players are coming up through the system because you don't know where they're going to end up in Pittsburgh because their position might be determined to an extent by what's already here. See, case in point, the two catching prospects, Henry Davis and Andy Rodriguez. We don't know where they're going to play when they get to PNC Park because we don't know that you know, you want both of them behind the plate, that you'd have somewhere to put them in the outfield, first base, who knows? Heck, now there's, you know, four first basemen or whatever it is. So it's 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 not a question that I can easily answer because I disagree with the premise of valuing the positional flexibility the way the Pirates do or the deployment, as Charrington once put it. That stuff doesn't mean much to me at all get get good players find positions for them and move on i appreciate the question i appreciate everyone listening to daily shot of pirates we'll do another one tomorrow mm-hmm.